Oh, hello there. This is Cuckoo. This here is really heavy. It's a synthesizer. This is the Hydra synth by ASM. It's a very good uh, wavetable, mostly a synthesizer with lots of modulation possibilities to create good sounds. Um, I want to show you how to make sounds and please try to follow along if you wish. Just hang out with me while I create some sounds. I'm going to try to turn off my phone so that we don't have any notifications in the meanwhile. Um, yeah, let's make some sounds. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. The Hydra synth by ASM. It's a wavetable based synth, but there's much more in it than just wavetables. There's filters, there's FM synthesis, there's a plenty of effects, a really good modulation matrix and a macro assign. So what I'd like to do now is just to, to give you a, a really quick overview and then jump right into it and make a couple of patches without thinking much to just give you a glimpse of what can be done. And then we'll get into the, the depth of how it all works out. So the first thing I want to do is just take a moment to explain this. This is actually a very nice uh, graphical representation of how the sound engine works. We've got the oscillators, oscillator 1, 2, and 3. The os oscillators, they generate a waveform. In this synth, it's a wavetable-based oscillators. And that means that there's a lot of different wave shapes that can be um, generated. Let's move to an empty slot there. Okay. Sawtooth. Yeah, oscillator one is a sawtooth. It says right there too. So let's wiggle this. This is called Esquire 3. Scorpio 6. Yeah, lots of lots of different wavetables there. Like little snippets of audio. So it's right now set to single. I'm going to set it to wave scan, which can scan between eight different uh, waveforms. And go into the wave list here and say, okay, the first one is going to be a, the pulse. The second one, if I want to listen to this while I wiggle and press it. How about this? So third one. Okay, I set a couple of, of waves now. Let's exit this and try the wave scan. You see what I mean? You can scan and morph between them. Okay, let's set up a modulation that does that for us. So I'm going to go to uh, modulation matrix, assign, and I'm going to assign one of the envelopes here. So I'm just going to take one of them, envelope three, and send envelope three to uh, oscillator one. This is a quick way of, of taking a source and a destination. And you can see it's already assigned right here. So envelope three is the source, destination one. And we um, want to have the wave scan. So let's see what the envelope three looks like. Not very interesting. Let's do this. Maybe I'll do it reverse instead. Mod matrix, go there. Minus. And go to the oscillated one and... Yeah, that's nice. So now it's going between these. change it. Let's make it slower. Let's make a slow attack too. Yeah, cool. Let's try the filters. Filter one. Resonance. Cool, I'm gonna open. There's a drive there. Let's listen. Oh, that's nice. That's actually very nice. Bass. Yeah. 
So now this is coming in where the filter is applied here. So it's not applied at the oscillator level after the mixer, the filter comes in there. Okay. Okay, let's do this. So I'm just flying through this right now. I'm gonna go into the details later. It's like, yeah, the envelope is right there. Envelope, which envelope is envelope one? Cool. That's kind of beefy. So let's go to uh, pre effects and see what effects are there. Rotary, Tremolo, Distort. Let's try, uh, I don't know, lo fi. Okay. Let's try another one. Tremolo. That was actually kind of nice. Pitch mod. Wow. That is cool to have like a pitch modulation. At that level, it's not at the oscillator level, it's at the effects level. That's cool. Okay, let's go to the reverb. Wow, that's massive. Room. Oh, wow. Kind of a bathtub. Okay, so that's the that's the sound right there. Let's save it. So empty save. I'm gonna call it something. Boss. Boss. Bossy. Yeah, that's good. It's an e piano. No, it's a it's a bass. Bass. It's a bass called Bossy. Saving patch. Cool. We just saved the patch. Let's go to the next patch and create uh, and try some FM synthesis. See what it sounds like. So let's let the one. I think FM synthesis works great when it comes to smooth waveforms. So I'm going to dial in a smooth waveform here. I'm going to set it to um, wave scan again and start out with some sort of wave. Okay, this one. It sounds nice. Okay, so uh, the way to make FM synthesis here is in the mutant group. So let's go into mutant group. We've got FM linear FM already as a uh, default value here. So oscillator one goes into mutant one, and I'm going to apply some FM to that. We can do that by applying FM from itself or as an additional sine wave right here in this module, or we can use any of the other oscillators as a source. So let's try to do with the sine wave. <laughs> Ratio. Uh, keep shift, it, it snaps the values. Okay, ratio three. So let's do this and do it with a, an envelope. Envelope three. Okay, mod matrix, assign envelope three, send it to mutant one. We're going to apply stuff to the depth and. And also go to envelope one and change the envelope. One really cool thing with the envelopes is the second page because there you can actually change the curve, which is very handy. Mod matrix, a little less of that maybe. thing is now we've done this on one of them on the first mutant there we can also create feedback then we can head over to mutant group 2 
and do the same thing over again. It's like three os operators of FM synthesis right here. So we can have a hint of this, for instance. Let's do it at like a short. I'm going to prepare envelope for that to be really, really short. And mod matrix, assign envelope four, send it to mutant two. I'm going to change the depth and go there and it was too short. And far too much modulation. Got an like a hard attack there. So the F, the filters, I'm going to check out the different types of filters there. So we've got these. There's a bunch of filters there. Uh, and the vowel filter. That's fun. Okay, let's try the vowel. That's really silly. Okay, let's try another one. Initialize. Uh, yeah. Um, oscillator. Let's make an organ sound real quickly and see what it feels like. Typically, organs are many oscillators that just uh, have different pitches. And typically, are just sine waves or like very simple waveforms. So I'm going to take a sine wave here. Oscillator 2, sine wave. Oscillator 3, sine wave. And then I'm going to go to the mixer and take all of them in like so. Oscillator 1. Two could be octave, three could be maybe like so. That's like a typical organ sound. Now, it would make sense to have the filter kind of be a little, or the the noise to be a sort of a. Ch an attack sound. Let's, sound. let's listen to the noise, shall we? Uh, mixer, oscillator, oscillator, ring, noise. I think we have different types of noises. White, pink, brown, red, that's nice. Violet. So what would be a nice, like, key on sound? Maybe pink. Let's see. Let's do this really quick. Mod matrix, assign, take envelope three, send it to mixer. And we want to change noise volume. Okay, let's try the different noise types. Mod matrix. So now this is just three oscillators and it sounds sounds nice. Let's check check this out. On the effect place there, we've got one effect called rotary, which is typically a uh, sort of a Leslie thing. That's nice. Let's add some reverb to that. Hold, plate, cloud. Okay, you know what? This is a good place to do some macros. So macro one could be like an overtone little knob. So I'm gonna assign mutant one, and uh, not ratio, but dry wet. Cool. And also, Assign mutant to dry wet. Cool. Post effect. Let's see what we've got there. We've got the same effects, I think. Chorus. That like. Flanger. Low. E 
EQ. It's a good EQ. Whoa, distort. So for instance, the EQ, I think it's nice to have an EQ. High gain, low gain, mid gain. So for instance, your sound might be sounding pretty cool, but it's a little bit dull. And then you can go and add an EQ and just fine tune it a little bit to make it sit more where you'd like it to sit in the mix. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. And let's make like a typical sound, a sit sound. So set the cut off there, envelope. And that is envelope one, right? So envelope one, should look cool. Okay, how, how do we make it beefier? Well, one thing is the drive, which actually adds a lot of oomph into the sound. One thing that this keyboard has that is pretty good actually is aftertouch and uh, polyphonic aftertouch. So let's use the aftertouch, I'm gonna take away that, to open up the filter again. Let's do that. Mod matrix assign. Let's wiggle this a bit until we find poly, mono, poly aftertouch. Yeah, and we want to send that to the filter. Boosh, cut off. I want to plus it. So there we go. And this is polyphonic, meaning that each finger can dictate its own aftertouch. And the amp, it ha already has a velocity envelope. Let's go into the voice menu and see what we have there. Go up polyphony, mono, mono high, unison, unison, done. With the density. Whoa, how much do we want to detune? Unison is playing several iterations of the sound on the same key with an offset in tune. Stereo width. That's pretty cool. We've got stereo width on the oscillators, so every Every launch on, of an oscillator is going to randomly uh, be spread out in stereo. That's kind of beefy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the analog, what's it called? Analog, analog FL. I think the more of this uh, you dial up, it's going to uh, kind of drift up in the octaves. So an octave is not going to be really an octave here. Like, listen to this. You can hear it in polyphonic. That's a sound, that's a sound. Let's check out the filters again. I think there's different types of filters, like with slightly different characteristics. And these are all uh, um, cut of filters. High pass, band pass, and vowels. This one, I like this one. L low pass eight pole. I'm gonna take away the reverb there. Make it really short and snappy with the envelope. Sorry, I'm, I might be. Am I clipping? Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a 
is nice. Okay, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call it Barty. Yeah, Barty. Okay, so that was like a quick dive in uh, in the sound engine. And uh, yeah, I got. I hope you got like a little quick idea of what can be done. And so now let's kind of restart and and go in depth with this. So as you could see, I was doing a lot of stuff with the oscillators. Uh, the mutation is a way to uh, to make modulations. One thing that I'd like you to pay attention to and to get into the forehead and the forefront of your thinking uh, when you're creating a sound here is that almost all of these parameters can be uh, modulated. So if you find a static place where stuff sounds good, uh, but you would like something to move, you can. Uh, with the help of oscillators and LFOs and the modulation matrix. And that is going to open up so much possibilities of making cool sounds. So let's take it a little bit more thorough now. So let's make a new sound. In order to make an, an empty sound, either go to an empty place here in the list or press initialize twice. We're here. Oscillator 1 is currently the one sounding. It is, as we can see, a sawtooth. We can also, by just pressing this, see it right here. By just pressing here, you're not doing anything. You're just seeing what's underneath that place uh, on the screens. So I want to change oscillator one. I press oscillator one. And now I can change it by using this. So oscillator one has two modes. Single is just one waveform. <laughs> You change it like that. The second mode is called wave scan, which is a way where you can set up eight different oscillators and scan or morph between them. So right now it's set to position one. If you start dialing this, you can see that it goes all the way up to eight. Currently, the wave list has just one uh, wave in it, which is a sawtooth. So let's edit this by just pressing this button there. So right now we're at oscillator one. We just entered the wave list to enter the list of waveforms in oscillator one. I think this is uh, the cool part with the um, hydrosynth. Uh, there's a lot of really, really nice sounding, useful uh, wave tables there that you can set up and morph between. And the way to quickly see which one you're editing is to press the corresponding button there to see its waveform. Right now, we're editing at waveform number one. It could be that. If we start wiggling with this one, we can't hear it until we press it. Now we, it's like a, an editing mode where you just listen to that one. And when you exit this mode, it's going to behave as you've told it to behave, but you kind of hijack that and say that, no, I just want to edit this and listen to this. So one thing that's going to take off a lot of time is to find the useful waveform because there's a lot of waveforms. I haven't counted, but hundreds of them. Uh, and if, if you find a waveform and you want it to transition to another one, it's going to take a, a lot of time to kind of find sweet spots. So let's try to make some sort of piano sounds that goes from a bright attack and then um, gradually uh, moves towards a more rounded sound. The way I'd like to, to think is that wave number one is the ending point. It's just the way I, I think. Uh, but you can do, do it the other way around. Wave number one could be the starting point if you want to. It, it all depends on how you route the mod matrix. So I want to set up a, a really round and nice sound of wave number one there. That is a nice sound though. That could be on place number two there. So I don't move this to there. Well, I don't think you can, but one thing you can do is to press shift. And if you press shift while doing this, you can see all of them change at the same time. It's actually making a succession of the one that you move, like in this case, horizon 
4 Horizon 3 That means that this is going to be Horizon 4, 5, 6 and the, the forthcoming sound waves in that um, in the whole wave table list So that makes it easy to kind of quickly uh, make this a close value to that Okay, so let's say that is like near the end of the waveform. I want it to sound like <laughs> if you know what I mean. So that is close to the end. Let's find an even softer one. And once you find a soft one or a sound, compare them to like this. Are they compatible? I think so, even though this has a peculiar overtone. That could be interesting, still. Okay, so let's find an even sharper one. Uh, not that one. Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Okay, so I've set these up now, number one, two, three, and four, to kind of work. Okay, so let's exit this now and and wiggle this wave scan. Okay, let's try to do that automation right now. So the way to do that is through going to the modulation matrix. Let's press it. And in the modulation matrix, there's a bunch of, how many? 32 different uh, modulation patch points. Uh, what you're doing there is taking a value from any of these sources, like the LFOs or the envelopes, and applying that value to any of the parameters you want to move. In this case, we want to send some sort of value that ramps down and send that to oscillator one wave scan. So what I'm going to do is use oscillate envelope three there. You can see this dotted lines there saying that envelope two is actually hard routed to the amp. You can still use it for modulation, but I want to be sure to, to have something that is not hard uh, routed to anything else. So envelope three there, I'm gonna just quickly go there to set it up to be like, so, like a quick attack, a decay over, uh, I don't know, a couple of seconds, two seconds, and then with a sustain that is zero. Okay, let's try that. So let's go to the mod matrix again. And it says assign, assign, assign. None of these are assigned. It's not set up. There is no modulation going on. So the way to set it up is to press this button to highlight assign. And now it's waiting for you to press a source or to start dialing here. But a cool way is that when you are here, it's actually going to wait for you to press something. You can see that I just pressed it and then changed it. And if you want to, you can press two like the source, then the destination, like press and hold, press where you want to send it, oscillate to one, and it's gonna set it up for you. But we don't wanna change the pitch. Let's listen to that, I'm gonna dial this value up. This is how much of, of the value coming from the envelope do you want to apply to this value? Right now I set it up to It's doing it to the pitch. We don't want that. We want it to be to the wave scan. Right now, if, if we go back to oscillator one here, edit the wave list, the whole, if you're gonna go from one to eight, there's eight waveforms here. We just set up uh, four of them, uh, and I was thinking they were gonna be my wave tables. Uh, but right now, 
when I was doing the mod matrix, I was dialing up a really high number there. Actually, I went up all the way to the maximum. That means that I'm sending a value that's going to make oscillator 1 change from, from 1 all the way up to its maximum point, which is 8 in this case. I just want it to go to a, around 4, so I can't modulate like as much as I did here. Let's go to... Like so. That's not too bad. Now that we set this up, how would I change this value with like the force coming in over velocity? The way to do that is to make another modulation point, catching the velocity. So let's do that. That cannot be caught by just pressing it. I need to dial it in. Mono velocity, velocity on. Okay, go down there. I want to send that to this value, which is a, a little bit odd in the beginning. So I'm catching the velocity, and I want to apply this to the modulation matrix uh, slot number one. So I, I could press the mod matrix there and say, I want to send it to number one. So the more velocity now, the further it's going to go in that uh, wave list. Until we find a spot where it's natural. Absolutely not. Maybe I can even dial this down. Did you understand that? Mod matrix is a place which has a lot of uh, patch points, and each patch point has a number. Right now we're at number one to three, one to three. Next page, four to six, four, five, six. And each of these patch points can also be modulated. So you can make one modulation that will be modulated by another modulation, which will be modulated by a third modulation, which will be modulated by a macro assign. So you can make series of modulation pat point, patch points which are interconnected in different ways. And that leads to a lot of um, complex opportunities. Right now I'm just making a very basic velocity modulation. So taking the velocity and sending that value to the other modulation to increase the strength of that modulation. If I sent the velocity straight to the wave scan, it would be a static modulation. It would just catch the value and just boom, set it up to that value. But since I'm sending it to another modulation, I'm making that modulation stronger. The amplitude of that modulation is now following the amplitude of the velocity. So. You need to make two steps in, or, in order to catch the velocity and apply that to a modulation. One thing that I really like is key release sounds. There's a bunch of different ways of approaching how to do that. Let's, let's try some ways of doing that. One way would be, first off, to let the sound ring a little bit and then to apply, to, to make some stuff while it rings out a bit. So I'm going to increase the release time of the sound and then try to catch the release time and do a little spike of something during the release time. So first of all, I'm going to go to envelope 2 there, which is tied to the amp, and set make it a little bit more interesting. So it rings a little bit. 
I'm also gonna set set it too. And you can hear that the moment I release it, you hear that there is something going like this, immediately going to a, a snapping to a value. In, a, in fact, that is what I want to do, but reversed. And what is doing that value is the modulation that I am doing here. I'm taking envelope three and sending it to oscillator one wave scan. If we check envelope three here, you can see that the release time is actually zero. So it's applying this envelope to that modulation. And when I release it, there is no ring time or release time. So it's just abruptly going to that last value. So right now we've set this up to, to be a positive value change. We're actually following this shape and applying a positive value to, to raise the modulation and then make that mo modulation fall gradually. How about flipping that upside down? So instead of increasing it, we decrease it. That would mean that on the oscillator, we, kind of, we start out at number four. And in the modulation matrix, instead of adding, we would decrease. I'm going to dial down the velocity for now while we're working here. And the envelope wouldn't necessarily look like this. It would look more like um, this. I say even more that modulation matrix. Did you follow that? Maybe I wasn't clear enough. But now, instead of increasing a value while we're pressing and making an envelope, I'm taking that value and decreasing the value instead. That means that the ring time, the release time, will create, instead of a lowering the value again, it will increase the value because we're making a negative change. So as you can hear now, in the end, when I release the sound, the, the note, it goes up again because we have some release time. If I set the release time to the shortest value, you could hear that it immediately just jumped up. So now we have that value, or that behavior that we were kind of work, looking for. So let's go to the envelope of the amp now and dial down the release time of the whole sound. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Uh, but in the process, we killed the velocity because now it doesn't really work. Before, it was a positive movement, and the velocity just added to that positive movement. Now we've set the top, and it's a negative uh, movement. Maybe it's going to be a bit technical, but we could solve it like this. We set the oscillator one to a lower starting point. Maybe there. And instead, we're saying we're using the velocity to increase not the mod matrix, but maybe just the oscillator's um, wave scan. That's kind of nice. So let's listen to the drive and see what that makes now. So filter one has something called drive. And this is a quick, uh, like a shortcut to that. We just move it around. You see that you can't even see it here because it's on page number two of the filter.
one thing that I've noticed with Hydrosynth in general is that the sound, the overall sound, is kind of thick and creamy, especially in the low end. So when playing a lot of notes, I feel like it quickly gets very saturated. So a, a way to deal with that would be, uh, for instance, with the second filter. Now the first filter could be used for the main kind of filtering uh, use, uses. Uh, well, the second filter could be more of a, a fine tuning, for instance. So I'm going to go to the second filter here and apply some sort of um, high pass filter where I kind of shave off the l bottom end of the spectrum a bit. So now we have, and also what's unique with filter two is that it can morph. So right now it is a low pass, band pass, high pass kind of filter. I feel like somewhere there, perhaps. I'm gonna key track this too, 100%, to make the filter follow the keyboard. Very much bottom end. There, I kind of caught a little bit of it. Now I'm gonna try the morph button to show you what it looks like. So this filter can be a, a high pass, a band pass, and a low pass. And if I'm uh, changing the resonance, while doing the morph. Okay, let's check out some of the others. There's a... That's kind of interesting. Just find the sweet spots. It's all about finding sweet spots. Good. This is like a three, a stair, a stepping stone. I'm gonna gently shave off some bass. And then, yeah, let's try a filter one then, with the one that I liked. Uh, especially like the low pass eight pole. Let's see. Yeah, I like this. I kind of think that most of the time, a lot of uh, low pass filters, they sound very similar. But then once in a while you find this one filter that's like, mm, yeah, this is, this is very nice. This could actually work really well uh, with the same kind of modulation that we did to to have that uh, release sound. So I'm going to apply that to the filter. Was it envelope 3? Yeah, it was. So let's take mod matrix, assign envelope 3, send it to filter 1, cut off. make it faster. So envelope one, uh, three. Yeah, now it's starting to sound like something that I like. And we're still just using one oscillator here. Nothing else, nothing fancy actually. So so how would we take it to another level? Well, let's go to the pre-effects and see if there's one effect that can help us make this even more uh, play playable. Chorus. Okay. Flanger. Rotary. I think the rotary is very gentle. 
face it. That actually sounded really good on this sound. So I'd like, I like that. Maybe not hundred percent. Yeah, I want hundred percent. How about the feedback? Reverb, there's a couple of different reverbs to choose from. So press dial. There's the hall, there's room, there's plate, cloud. It's a little bit weird. Maybe plate in this case. Sometimes I like to set it to something really short. like a little almost like a very short spring reverb or something cool I like it actually this is one of these points where you're like hmm this is good let's save it save I'm gonna call it Beavis <laughs> I, I was thinking about Stevie Wonder so and then I always have a tendency to start all my bass sounds with B so then it became Beavis so as you can see I'm saving it and advancing to the next spot by just pressing that V BV and by pressing shift and the button I go back again BV yeah and uh, it's what is it yeah let's call it base okay save empty slot yeah save saving patch yeah it's saved cool how about reverb delay stereo pan LRCD I'm not sure what it is reverse I think the reverse delay it's really nice touch to have that just ready to go so let's see the last one now, this is a type of sound that could maybe benefit from distortion depending on what you want to play so I'm going to try the distortions here rotary, low fire, tremolo, EQ distortion it's very heavy drive Curve. The more curved, the more distorted, kind of asymmetric. So, for a gentle type of uh, distortion, set these to zero, I think. Yeah. Sometimes you can set these to very low values to kind of increase the beefiness of the sound. So without and with I 
think I'm gonna try the EQ too. See what it sounds like. EQ. So there's a bunch of things you could do that. Low boost. Oh, these are actually like presets. It's nice. High cut. Smile. <laughs> High gain, low gain, yeah, yeah, so what I'd like to do now is to set up some macros. A macro is a place where you can assign a little group of, it's almost like the mod matrix, uh, but you do it with a knob instead. So let's go to macro assign, macro one there. See, we've got a couple of destinations, eight destinations. So, and then the last page is the name of the macro. So I want to experiment a little bit, see if I can find an interesting, some interesting settings for this instrument. So let's assign um, a destination which I would like to s change. For instance, the overall attack. Uh, in order to, to try it out, you this is kind of the master knob. So by twisting this knob, we're changing all of these assign, uh, assignments and modulations at the same time. So how about also making the envelope have a um, slower decay? Let's see, decay. And also some of that decay, decay that we're hearing is actually, let's assign envelope two is coming from the filter. So let's do the envelope decay longer and also some of the envelope uh, that we're hearing uh, is the change on the waveform which is actually coming from envelope three so now we're setting up three destinations to react on one knob here so let's see envelope three and it's coming from the attack <laughs> Let's give it a name. I call it attack. Yeah, let's call it attack. So now we have attack. And then uh, the release sound there. That is something I'd like to, to be able to dial in. So let's make a macro two there. Macro assign, macro two. Now we're going to make some changes to the sound in order to make that go away gradually. So I'm going to dial this up. Yeah, so envelope three is the main envelope for us to uh, change here, I think. So if we change envelope three, let's see, envelope three, assign, we change the release to positive, to longer. This is interesting. This plan to make the envelope have a long release kind of backfired because it, maybe we need to set something on the envelope three there in order to let it always restart regardless of where it is in the release time. It didn't really restart the way we expected. Okay, let's find this out. I'm going to see envelope, envelope, release, PPM sync. Envelope loop, free run off, reset. Okay, so let's set reset to on. Now it's always going to reset. If it's off, it's not going to reset. I'm going to reset the, uh, the envelope. This is getting a little bit technical, but in order to go to macro assign and... Okay. So now we're creating macro 2 there. If it's 0, 
we have the snapper release time. And now we're gradually dealing with the, the key off. I'm going to give it a name too. There we go. So we've got attack. We've got key off. Okay, I'd like to set this macro up to be a delay because I, I like the delay we made, but maybe it doesn't work all the time, but sometimes. So I'm going to assign a delay. Not time, but dry wet. Give it a name. Yeah, delay. Maybe we could select a secondary one to change the reverb time. And while changing the time, maybe even change the reverb. Uh, try wet. Give it a name. So, reverb. Going from this. Delay. I want to change the delay a little bit to make it even more. Yeah, yeah, so that's a, that's a nice sound. Save, save. Just saving, saving it again. So I'd like to do something with this knob. It's always preset to be vibrato. Actually, that's kind of nice in this case. <laughs> okay, let's, let's let it be there. Well, okay, let's try this strip here. Uh, it's set up to be um, a pitch band, as you can hear. When using the ribbon controller, you, you need to kind of come to terms with uh, that it is a little bit slow. It's tracking a little bit slower than keys and all of the buttons and stuff. So if you want something really tight, um, I'd suggest put it on, on something like this. Uh, but this is very long, so you can... So you have a lot of control that way. So um, I'm not sure what to do with it. Let's first of all go into the voice menu. In the voice menu, that's a place where certain settings are already preset. So let's see if we can find the ribbon controller there. Vibrato amount is set to z to two. I set it to zero. There's no vibrato there. And we can say that pitch band is set to two. Let's set it to seven. Or maybe even 12, which I think is fun. Uh, so the, the ribbon controller, should we just press it? Yeah, we press the ribbon controller there. And we can see it's set in pitch band mode. Thurman mode. Oh, that is weird. So there's a Thurman mode. This particular sound doesn't make sense. But that is like an additional input <laughs> that's fun key span four octaves octaves shift okay what other modes 
mod only that means that we can make modulations with it so those are the pitch band theremin oh there's a quantize too let's see and glide okay yeah that's interesting okay i'm gonna set it to mod only and i'm gonna set it up to do some modulation so okay let's go to mod matrix go down here assign i want to send the ribbon yeah to uh the effect can i do that yeah yeah and parameter one and two oh it's kind of limited where you can send it into the effects the effects are not polyphonic so it makes sense that it's, there have to be some some sort of limitation there. Say param parameter one. What is that? Yeah, speed parameter two. That didn't really work out. Let's see if we can send it to something else. How about the mutant? Mutant. We send the ribbon to a mutant wet uh dry wet okay we're learning right so the ribbon controller goes to the fm modulation of a mutant one there actually i'm kind of happy with the sound Maybe we should take back that voice, the modulation. You can see me pressing exit a lot of times when I just want to exit anything. Go into voice again. I'm going to give it back that vibrato amount. So the vibrato is an extra kind of LFO somewhere. Yeah, it sounds nice. Saving. The process here that I'm displaying is a little bit chaotic. It's not divided up into nice uh, little sections here, but I hope you can still get something out of this. Let's start from scratch here. Initialize and let's see what the FM synthesis can do. So I want to start off with, actually I want to do wave scan. I'm going to find this in the end of this enormous long list. There's something nice. Bass. Okay, so I'm going to do the same trick again. Shift, select it. So now we have. Okay, I want to see what FM synthesis sounds like uh, when I mess around with this. So I'm going to do the same thing on oscillator two, the mixer, oscillator one. Select it too. Let's do the exact same thing there. Mode, wave scan, wave list. I'm going to set it to the same. It's towards the end somewhere. Yeah. So, what I'd like to do is do some sort of um, randomized movement between these and i'm going to try the lfos here and see if i can find a random lfo yeah let's use oscillator one first mixer oscillator one and then i'm going to see if there's a free lfo i'm going to take lfo three there sign triangle so up so down square pulse noise step okay i'm going to try these the random one, the wave random. Noise is kind of nasty. Random, I'm really interested in random. So let's listen to random and see what it does. So I'm gonna send that random value to wave scan. So modulation matrix, assign, LFO to oscillator one, wave scan. That is nice. Gonna make it slower. On the second page, there's something called smooth. 
making it slower or smoothing out the changes. I'm going to set this to the middle value of 4. I'm going to set this to slower. Ooh, that's just beautiful. I'm going to do the same thing on oscillator, on LFO number 4 there. I'm going to set it to um, random. Set the rate pretty low, but not the same as the other one. I'm going to set the smoothing to pretty high. And then I'm going to send that to oscillator 2. And then I'm going to have them modulate each other and see what happens. So mod matrix, assign alpha 2, uh, 4, see oscillator 4, wave scan. And set oscillator to to the middle. Actually, okay. And then I'm gonna only listen to oscillator one for now, but still, I'm gonna use the mutant here and say, well, oscillator two is gonna be the source for modulating. Oscillator 1 with FM synthesis. And depth. Whoa. Oh, this is nice. This is so nice. Like this. I make like a really slow envelope that kind of opens up and closes down a little bit. Okay. Number three there, mod matrix. I'm going to send that to mutant uh, envelope three to mutant two. No. Envelope three to mutant one. We're still at mutant one. And I'm going to change the depth. Okay. It's a little bit. It's too much, but it's a good way to just see if it works. So now if we change the pitch of us later too. This is crazy. So what if we did the same thing to oscillator 2 to have oscillator 1 modulate oscillator 2 and oscillator 2 modulate oscillator 1? What would happen? We'll find out very soon. So uh, source modulator 1 depth Is it? Is the modulation Oh, of course, yeah, the modulation happens before the mutants. But now we can listen to both of them. This is mysterious. I'm wondering now if, if the drive, yeah, the drive happens here. So let's listen to the drive now and see. Okay, 
Okay, let's try um, the EQ to kind of tame it a little bit in the middle there, mid gain. The amp envelope could be a bit more gentle. Reverb. A delay. A reverse delay. Maybe a cut off. Okay, envelope one. Envelope slow attack on the filter there. Okay, by the end there, I just want to try it. It's going to sound a bit crazy, but how about a lo-fi? Yeah, that is a bit crazy. Let's save this. I'm going to call it something with FM. Cool. Save. So let's bring up a sound that I made just before I started making this. It's called Roadie. And I started out by kind of an analyzing a, a rose to see what overtones are active and stuff and tried to make a, a rose inspired sound. So this is where a, a sound could kind of end up like with some nice um, selections here that you can make uh, on the macro page. If I would like it to be more brighter, I have a bright in there. I got a um, tremolo. So I've got some FM stuff going on here. I've got um, reverb. And then I got a tone, which is going through different waveforms. Q. 
key off. And down, down the reverb. We got a short to make it shorter. Something called softer to make it really soft. With softer and brighten, still got some of that bright attack. So I turn down brighten. nice sound. This is typically the way I work. I start by kind of finding a concept and then I try to increase that and make good controls for that sound. So imagine creating a synth engine sort of and then giving the user some good tweaks for that synth engine. So this would be my kind of e-piano if you will. One thing, uh, especially with a sound like this, it sounds kind of bright and nice down here. But if it doesn't sound nice up here, you kind of get a little bit out of control there. Then it's really hard to, to use it over the whole keyboard range. So I usually try to use keyboard tracking as a modulation source to, to kind of tame the harsh tones when you go up in into the higher uh, register uh, I'm not really done with it it still is a bit ear piercing and the same thing down uh, something happened when I went further down that kind of the bass I wanted to have more bass so I added the third oscillator gradually when you go down to give it more of a round warm bass there yeah I realize there's a lot more to learn a lot more to be said but this is it for this video uh, I hope you, you you got to see some stuff that got you inspired or intrigued and whoop, I hope that whoop, I'm gonna make it tidy I hope you got something out of it at least and uh, I think it's a really solid piece it's heavy it's sturdy and the sound engine is very versatile and the last update Actually, they they uh, introduce a couple of new filters even and new features and new a new LFO I think came the the step LFO and uh, yeah so so they are very much interested in uh, adding functionality over time and making it a greater experience over time. This uh, is called the Hydrosynth. It's made by ASM Ashen Sound Machines. Uh, yeah thank you for uh, hanging out with me if you enjoy the stuff that I'm doing here on YouTube please consider throwing in a little token of um, appreciation over at my Patreon uh, where you can support independent artists such as me and many others I support a lot of people and I do it because I value their work so if, if you feel like you value my work here on YouTube uh, please consider throwing in some donation over at Patreon also, if you like uh, to, to get the t-shirts that I'm making, uh, I've got t-shirts for sale online if you want to, t-shirts.truecuckoo.com. And yeah, more of the links in the description. 
thank you everyone for uh, supporting me over the years and checking out my videos. I love to, to keep doing this uh, because this is stuff that I absolutely want to do in my life. Sharing and teaching synthesizers and playing music on electronic music instruments. I hope I see you soon. And hit me up in the comments if there's something specific you, you'd like to know more about. Take that into account when making new videos. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, stay cuckoo, everyone, and peace out.